Hey y'all, so today we're talking about Muse Chat. And Muse Chat is something that I've used in many of my videos, but I've not done a specific video on it. What's it about? How do you get to it, etc. So I have the documentation pulled up in the background here. I'll link this in the description below. The idea is that Muse Chat is fundamentally an AI tool integrated into the Unity editor if you choose to use it in that capacity. Um, uses advanced natural language processing tech to help navigate and use Unity's features. So it's really a creator tool and it's meant to help you speed up your workflow. I typically use it to uh, basically reinforce the areas where I'm weaker in my own development. So if I'm working on a project alone or a very quick turnaround demonstration, um, instead of trying to enlist the help of a C-sharp developer on my team, I'll use uh, Muse Chat just to create that C-sharp script for me. Now with all things AI, is that script going to be perfect had it been written by a seasoned veteran programmer? Probably not. There are probably some areas that it could be better, but typically these are more to be used as tools instead of replacements for individuals on a team. So the idea is that this would speed up the generation of that code. I can use it for my rapid prototyping, and then eventually I'll have someone who really knows their stuff about C-sharp go in pull it apart, debug it a little bit, and let me know how to improve that. So that's generally how you would use Muse Chat. There are two different ways to, to leverage Muse Chat. One is inside of the web. So this is, you can think of like a chat GPT. It's all through a URL and it's trained on Unity data. So all of our documentation, our forums, et cetera, uh, is where it's it's parsing all of its information from to return your uh, your queries. And then you can also use it inside of the editor. And inside of the editor is how we're going to do it for the most part today, um, because that also allows you to have context of your project. So if you want to drag a certain game object over, or you want to drag in a certain console error and say, hey, what's wrong with this? You can actually do that using the editor version of Muse Chat. So I'm just going to type in Muse Chat here. And once you've opened up the chat, this is where we're going to install our Muse Chat package into the editor. You can also uh, search around and find the web version. So you can get into muse.unity.com slash for me, en dash us dash chat. So that's the idea, right? Is basically you can either type into here, how do I light a scene in HDRP? Or you can pull this into your editor. All right, and I am going to go ahead and click on that get started and install chat package. That's going to allow me to click open in Unity Editor, and now I can hit install. So now it's going to install the Muse chat package that I can use in editor. All right, so now this is loaded in and we have Muse up here where we can go into Muse chat and drag this over. We also have a Muse button here, but this is more about uh, what you're doing with your Muse account, experimental programs, etc. So I'm going to go ahead and close out the package manager. And then I'm going to come over into Muse Chat. And basically, there are a few key ways that you'll use something like Muse Chat. The first is to generate scripts, which is how I use it a lot. The next would be for debugging scripts. So if you have a script that's not working, you can plug that in and say, why is this broken? Uh, recommending fixes. So you can plug in something that's not looking how you want and say, how do I fix this? And then it can also give like documentation references. So let's say first I want to uh, write me a C sharp script for a game object. Make that game object rotate and give me public controls for direction of rotation, axes of rotation, and speed of rotation. So while it's musing and spitting out that C-sharp script for me, I'm going to go ahead and create a 3D object and make this probably a cube. And I'm going to call this rotating cube. So now I've created this. And what I want to do is come in with the script that this creates for me. And the nice thing is because I'm an editor, I'm not copying and pasting anything. It also gives me steps of how to deploy this, but I can just hit the save button. That's it. And now I can hit rotate object. 
save it out as the name of the class. That's going to all go through, and then I can drag this straight onto this object. Now, theoretically, when I come into the play button and click on scene, it is now rotating. And if I come over here into the script that it just created for me, I have controls for each axis. So we'll put that to zero, put that to one, perfect. So that's the way this is gonna work. I'll just put them all to one for now. Say we make the speed 100 and then I can change the direction. So this does everything I wanted it to do. And even if you are a seasoned programmer, that very well could take a lot less time just to type in what you want and have the C-sharp script made for you. So I'm gonna go ahead and hit stop. And let's say another one that I want is use chat, write a C sharp script that will animate tween the color of the game object between three different colors. Give me public controls for each color. So now while that's creating, let's say I do create 3D object sphere. Pull this sphere over just a little bit. And then let's say in the game window, I don't love how that's looking. So let me come back over here and put on my gizmos while that text is being created for me. Put on my preview camera here. And then I can bring this over here. Cool, so that's looking decent. And now in the meantime, this script has been created for me. So now I can come over here, this is called color tween, color tween, and then save. And now I can take this and I can drag that onto my sphere. And now that I've dragged that onto my sphere, I can come over into the inspector, grab my sphere, and see that this has a tween between three colors. That's red, green, and blue. Duration, three seconds each. Uh, that seems fine to me. So I'm just gonna hit play and see what we see and understand if this script is working. Looks pretty good. This is actually fantastic. So I'm having to do very little and all of this stuff is happening for me. Um, let's say I go into color tween And I'm going to delete out a part of this and I'm going to hit save. So now there's going to be an error, theoretically. Yep, so now we have an error down here. Uh, my lovely video is overlapping it, but there's our error in the bottom left. And now let's go ahead and take this and plug it back into Muse Chat. So I can now take this color tween item drag it over here and I can say, why isn't this script working? Can you fix it? I wanted it to animate between three colors on the game object it is assigned to and have public controls for those colors. So now it can look at this file and I'm going to say, all right, so now troubleshoot this. Tell me why this code isn't working. I need some help. This is what it was meant to do. So tell me why it's not working. So now it's thinking through that. What I could have also done is drug in the actual console error itself. So now it's spitting out a few ideas here of what could be wrong. And then it's telling me, okay, so here's how your script probably should look. Okay. So now I'm going to save that. I'm going to save it as color tween over the top of the existing color tween and say, this is what Muse is telling me that we should do instead. And then this sphere still has the color tween script on it, and when I hit play, there's no errors in the console below. 
and we see that this now works. The code is working. There are no console errors. We're good to go. So that's fantastic. So what's another way to leverage Muse Chat in editor? Uh, let's say I come back over here and I say, let's remove color tween as something that I'm focusing on. And let's say, uh, maybe I don't want that background. So how do I change the background in my game camera from skybox to color? And now it's not going to give me a script, but it is going to search the documentation. And then it's going to say, this is how I might recommend that you do that. So here it gives me steps, select camera, open inspector, change clear flags, find the clear flag in the option, change it from skybox to solid color, set background color. Okay, so I need to go to camera, go to inspector, come down, it said clear. Perhaps that was an error. I don't see a, an item for clear, but here's environment. So it did get me to the right place eventually. Background type, skybox, it said change that to solid color. And now I can make this whatever I want. So let's say this is like a dark blue, something super bright and obnoxious. Cool. So now it's, it's led me here. It had a couple of hiccups it looks like as far as how to get here exactly, but it notionally got me to the right spot. So I'm pretty happy with this. And overall, this is speeding me up a ton, not needing to write this C-sharp code myself. Um, so again, check this out if you're looking to do C-sharp development, if you're looking to have debugging run faster, uh, or if you, you would use any of the other tools that I've done videos on, like texture, sprite, animate, behavior, etc. And let me know if you have any questions about this. Would love to chat more about it and see how y'all are using it. Thank you for watching. Please like, comment, and subscribe, and I'll see y'all in the next one.